Hello, this is Candidate Master of Victor News Troyf, and today we will observe the game number 10 between Fabiano Corona and Magnus Carlsen. So let me just remind you that this is World Chess Championship 2018 and this match is played in London. Okay. Uh, again, so Fabiano Corona played for white pieces, Magnus Carlsen for black, and again it was um, Sveshnikov variation played of Sicilian. E4, C5, Knight F3, Knight C6, uh, D4, C takes on D4, Knight takes on D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, and E5 in this position. Knight D to B5, D6, Knight D5, as it was in the previous game. Knight takes on d5, e takes on d5, knight to b8. a4, bishop e7, bishop e2, castle, castle, knight d7 here. And previously uh, Fabiano Corona played bishop d2 and a5. Probably Magnus Carlsen prepared something against this maneuver, but unfortunately we couldn't see it because here white played a novelty they played b4 so the idea looks very typical uh, b4 to obtain more spatial advantage on the queen side this is the part of white's plan uh, in this um, system so this move is logical but of course uh, Fabiano Corona checked this line uh, uh, where he, he was preparing at home so uh, with uh, the most uh, strong computers and he found the best way to play here for white i'm not sure if magnus carlson knew how to play against b4 but i actually liked his idea he played a6 knight a3 and a5 trying to create uh, weaknesses on the dark squares on the queen side. Um, actually, c3 looks uh, really logical in this position, because uh, c3 and then uh, knight to c4, for example, f5, then knight goes to c4, a takes on b4, no, now uh, black is forced to take on b4 because the knight attacking on a5, c takes on b4, this position looks good, but I believe that uh, Fabiana Corona analyzed this move with the computer and um, that's why he probably chose the best continuation which is, li which is likely to be b takes on a5. Rook a5. Knight c4, rook a8, bishop e3, f5 and a5, with the idea to occupy the b6 square, f4. And uh, the bishop is under attack, it doesn't make sense to lose a temper by moving the bishop back, so it occupies the b6 square. If, for example, knight b6 then knight b6 then uh, rook a7 or rook b8 just and after bishop g4 i think uh, white is much better because it's quite difficult to play this position for uh, black because uh, after the light squared bishop's trade uh, black is left only with the dark squared bishop which is quite a worse bishop here the knight is much better that's why uh, here Magnus Carlsen chose a really good move. It was queen e8, aiming to get the queen to g6. What do you think is the best continuation here for white? Here, uh, Fabiano Corona played rook a3. Uh, that's a, a logical move, of course, but uh, that's a defensive move. The idea is um, that white wants to join his rook to protect the squares here on the king side. So he is preparing for defense. Uh, but instead of this move, he could play bishop h5, attacking the queen. 
how to play for black. Of course, g6. But then bishop goes back to f3, for example, and now the pawn on g6 stops the queen from coming to the king side. That's the idea. And if g5, then bishop goes to h5, and the queen has no squares. So rook f7 and black loses the exchange. That's why uh, the pawn will be on g6, and that stops uh, black's attack on the king side. Another idea here is just a rook a1. This is what computer recommends. So first you control the e4 square with the rook and at the same time you can play bishop f1 to support uh, the pawn cover over the king. However, rook a3 was played. Probably here uh, Fabiana Corona's preparation ended. Queen g6, bishop c7, e4. King h1. And in this position, black played a really brilliant move. That's b5 move. He is sacrificing the pawn, but that's a very dangerous sacrifice. I mean, if white uh, takes here, then his knight will be deflected from the center. And uh, Black can get the counterplay after f3, g takes on f3, and knight f5, with the idea to get the bishop to h3 and to attack the g2 square, so it's probably a checkmate. Well, for example, rook g1, queen h6, f takes on e4 now, but then rook f2, attacking on h2. The only move is to play rook g2, rook takes rook, king takes on g2, and at least we can win the knight. If, for example, instead of playing f takes on e4, which is a mistake because the f2 pawn dies, uh, white plays knight to c4, then e takes on f3, bishop d3, knight c4, bishop c4, and just rook f4, taking the bishop and aiming to get uh, the rook to the h file and attack on h2. However, I believe in this position, white can save by playing something like queen c1 or queen d2. But anyway, oh, for example, queen c1, bishop g5, and uh, the position is uh, still better for black. And after this move, it's almost a winning position. Now, rook h4 is a real threat. Okay. So you see that was a really strong move that can uh, deflect uh, white pieces from the center so that black can use the center to activate his pieces. Knight b6 was played. Of course, Fabiano Corona understood, but I'm, I'm not sure if he blundered this move or not, but uh, he definitely understood that it's a bad idea to accept this sacrifice. Knight takes on b6. Bishop takes on b6. And now in this position, Magnus Carlsen made a mistake. He could play b4, and the position remains equal, then rook a4 and bishop f6, with the idea to join this bishop to the attack. So if rook b4, then probably bishop c3. So his Bishops, uh, black bishops will be quite active if um, white takes the pawn on b4. Now, oh, let me show you bishop c3, then uh, rook a4, bishop f5, so the pawn is lost, but the compensation is enough here. Instead of playing b4, uh, what else did he have? Um, rook f5, bishop b5, f3, g takes on f3, and rook h5. Again, the position um, is approximately equal. This is how the computer thinks. But at the same time, I can say that it's quite difficult to defend. And if we calculate, uh, if we, for example, use uh, more 
powerful computer, then you will see that it's difficult to defend and then white uh, loses this position later. For example, here the idea is that the pawn on h2 is a weakness and it can be attacked even by queen h6. Or just bishop f6, bishop f5. But of course, of course, queen h6 looks more logical. Okay, let's go back. Instead of uh, playing uh, b4, bishop d7. Here. That is also a logical move here. So any of this move uh, equalizes the position. I believe rook f5 can be even better. That's a quite strong move. And here white has to play f3 to stop f3 played by black. If he takes the pawn here, then then f3 and rook goes to h5, and here uh, black wins. Okay. So instead of playing rook f5, bishop d7, or b4, he played queen to g5. And after this move, uh, of course, uh, the position looks very dangerous for white. So, but uh, if we calculate everything correctly, uh, the position is fine for white. And, uh, for example, the computer suggests to take the pawn on b5, and then uh, white can defend the position successfully. For example, rook f6, then, uh, if, then uh, rook e1 is the best move. Rook e1, uh, bishop f5, a6, rook h6, bishop f1. Bishop g4, queen d2, if e3, then just pawn takes, f3, g3, bishop f6, so the position is much better for white, and uh, white can't, uh, black can't succeed here on the king side. Also, bishop c6 can be played, another possible move. But as for me, I would keep the bishop here because then the bishop can move to f1 to support the king. However, uh, instead of taking the pawn on b5 here, um, uh, Fabiano Corona played too defensively. He played g3. And now looks like after f3, black has a dangerous attack and um, well, it's really difficult to save the position, but again, according to the computer analysis, f3 here is not the best choice. b4 was played, rook b3, Uh, after this move, rook b3 again is a kind of an accuracy. Here g takes on a4, queen takes on a4, and the rook goes to g3 to support the king and also to get some um, counterplay on the g-file. However, Fabiano Corona didn't um, open his king, didn't took with the g-pawn, he played rook b3. Bishop h3. Rook g1, and now uh, g takes on f4 is a real threat. That's why f3 and bishop f1. Bishop takes bishop and queen takes bishop. Uh, what happens if rook takes bishop here? If so, then queen g4 with the idea to play rook f6 or queen h3. Rook g1, rook f6, rook b4. Rook h6, queen f1, queen h5, attacking the h to pawn h4 is the only move, but then black sacrifices the bishop, g4, uh, attacking the queen, but after bishop f2, it's a forced checkmate. So queen f1 was a risky move. That's why rook takes on f1. Oh, sorry, again, rook f1 was a mistake, 
it's better to have the rook on the g file so that's why queen f1 was played uh, now it's not easy how to continue the attack and uh, here magnus carlson decided just to take the pawn on d5 however then the pawn on b4 dies and the number of pawns is equal now of course black looks better because of these far advanced pawns and also the d pawn that supports the e4 pawn queen e6 rook b5 bishop d8 aiming to trade uh, the bishops on b6 um, the idea looks good because then d4 and the three squares are more weak than they are now queen e1 bishop takes b6 a takes on b6 rook a to b8 so Magnus Carlsen is worried about this pawn, he wants to stop it. Queen e3. Queen c4 here, and uh, the rook is under attack, the rook moves. Rook b7, rook d1, and queen e2. Trying to get any chances to win this game. Uh, if, for example, queen takes, then pawn takes, rook e1, rook takes on f2, king g1. Then rook b goes to f7, b7, rook f1 check. Of course, here white doesn't take, he goes with the king. Then rook b7. And uh, this position is slightly better for black. So here black has some real chances to win, but um, anyway, if white defends correctly, maybe it's it would be still a draw. Okay, let's go back. Uh, so it was a bad idea for white to take on e2, that's why he played rook e1. Then black traded the queens, d5. And then this position c4 might work because it ruins the pawn structure. So the pawn chain will be destroyed. And if uh, black doesn't take on c4, then the pawn goes forward. That's very risky. However, h4 was played. Rook c8, rook a3, king f7, the king goes to the center, king h2, king e6, g4, not to allow the king to move to f5, and at the same time to get the square on g3 for the king. Uh, here, rook c6 was played. So that's a kind of a necrosy. A rook cb8 maybe is better just to force the rook to um, tie down to the pawn on b6. Anyway, uh, rook c6, rook a6, now if uh, this uh, black rook on c6 moves on the c file then rook a7 will be played. King e5, king g3, h6. So here h5 is the best option. This is what Fabiana Corona did. And uh, but then um, Magnus Carlsen made a mistake. He played king d4. Then uh, the king became weak. Uh, the best option for him was to play g6, but still no chances to win for both sides. g6, h takes on g6. Rook takes on g6, rook b5. Then h5, uh, but uh, the pawn on d5 is a weakness. So here rook g4, king goes to h3, king f6, rook takes d5, rook b6, rook h5. That's absolutely drawish position. So no chances for any side. Uh, what else can I say in this position? Uh, of course, the b6 pawn is kind of weak, but at the same time, uh, white can uh, sacrifice this pawn and uh, just attack uh, with his rooks on d5, especially when the king was somewhere here. Okay, king d4 was played. Rook b5, that's a strong move. 
And here, if rook takes on c2, then rook a to a5 and d5 pawn dies. Because if rook d7, then b7. And here are white wins. What else? If e3, then pawn takes on f3, king takes on f3, rook d5. Rook c2 now, rook e5, uh, cutting the king off, king d4. Rook f5 attacking the pawn, uh, rook g2 check, king takes on f3, and rook b2. So the pawn dies here. Uh, in this position, white is slightly better, but that's definitely not enough to win this position. Okay, let's go back. So king d4 and after rook b5, black had to play a rook d6. Rook a4, check. Here, white is definitely better, but that's not enough to win. King goes back to e5, rook a to b4, so he improved the position of his rooks. King e6, c4, trying to destroy the pawn uh, chain. If he doesn't take, then c5 is played. Uh, d takes on c4, rook takes on c4. Then uh, the pawn on b6 dies, but after that, uh, two pawns on e4 and f3 dies both. But this position is a drawn position. After king g3, they both agreed to a draw because oh, that's a theoretical draw and they just decided to, um, to agree for a draw because I believe both sides knew that uh, Magnus Carlsen is strong enough to defend this position without any problems. Of course, if you play Blitz or uh, Rapid, you can try to win this position. And once I won this position against a candidate master, but it's only because he made a mistake. If he defenses correctly, then it's a draw. And I believe here Magnus Carlsen wouldn't make a mistake. Okay, so again, game number 10 ended in a draw and uh, everything will be decided in games 11, 12 or on the tie break. Okay, thank you for your attention. See you later.